What is going on, everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. I am so excited for this episode, and it's gonna be a quick one because it's not actually that complicated to understand, but I have a lot of other videos to film, and I really can't wait to bring them out to you guys. So I've got a ton of other things that I've got to film before we lose sunlight. So what we're gonna be talking about in today's episode is we're gonna be talking about a concept of sun mapping, but we're also gonna tie that into garden planning. Now, a lot of you have asked me, Luke, when I plan out my garden, should I plan out my garden or should I plant out my garden north to south, east to west, or somewhere in between? It's a very simple concept to, to explain because uh, it's based on the concept of sun mapping. So when you plant out your garden, you know where the sun, uh, where the sun goes because you, you should be mapping out the sun's path to know where shadows are cast from things like buildings and trees, fences, tall, immovable objects that you can't change during the growing season. You should know where those are at before you even put your garden in. But once you put your garden in, you have another option, and that's plants that you plant and the shadows that they cast. So this is a really cool concept and one that I, I haven't really talked a whole lot about, but one that I think is worth talking about because it definitely can make or break your garden. You see, in our garden, the sun rises, well, sun rises in the east, and it doesn't quite make it directly overhead. Even in mid-season, the sun is still kind of off to a slight angle, meaning that the sun comes up, it casts a shadow from the house, and it casts a shadow that way, kind of northwest. As the sun rises, it casts a shadow that's very, very small, but it casts it backwards, casts it south, or sorry, north. <laughs> and as the sun sets, it'll cast a, a longer shadow that casts northeast. And so the concept of, of sun mapping and garden planning comes into play with the plants that you want to plant and knowing where they are in respect to your garden and how to better plan out your garden so that you have increased success. That's my goal for this video is to give you guys increased success. Now it's not to say, you know, only plant tall things in the back. It's not to say only plant fast growing things in the back. I will touch on those things. But it's also knowing that, hey, you might be able to get a few extra weeks of your growing season out of a shorter plant by giving it a little supplemental shade. But know that there are some costs that come with that. Where I'm gonna get at? I'm gonna blow your mind here. Whoa, I'm sinking in the snow. <laughs> There's a lot of snow around. But you know, you might be wondering also, side note, you might be wondering, Luke, why are you talking about garden planning and planting out your garden if you're not even able to plant your garden out for another two months. And the reason is because I have a lot of viewers all around the world. These videos go global. And the thing I love about this is that I can actually help someone with their garden, hopefully if I explain it well enough, and I will maybe do another follow-up video as I'm planting out my garden, and I will explain uh, kind of my, my rationale for how I plant out my garden when that time comes, but I don't want to uh, miss out on all these other opportunities to help someone. And I really appreciate that you guys are, you know, if you're in my situation where you can't plant something out, that you're at least getting the concept, understanding the concept, and hopefully taking it down and writing it down on paper and planning out your garden on paper, on grid paper, or on a computer program, so that you, uh, so you can actually practice this before the, the time comes to actually use it in application. And so I wanna catch all the people that are you know, at that stage right now where they're starting to plant out their garden. So that's why I'm doing it right now. So the concept of sun mapping and garden planning, like we talked about, is knowing where the sun goes and where the shadows are cast. But when I plant out my garden, I like to plant out the taller, fast growing things in the back or the north of my garden. And my rationale for that is the fact that I'm throwing the shadows backwards. I'm not casting a shadow on my beds. I'm not actually shading out other plants with taller and more fast growing plants because the shadow will always go backwards, either northwest, uh, north or northeast, depending on the time of the day. But it's never going to be shading out any plants that I'm going to be growing. A prime example is if I took corn and I planted corn right here. <laughs> if I planted corn right here, the problem is, is that corn, and it's getting dark out, so I might have to change my ISO, hopefully. I don't, but um, I'd like to get this done in one shot if I can. So if I plant corn right here, the thing is, is that as the sun rises, it's going to get a shadow. You're actually going to get shade from the morning. You're going to get shade from the midday, and you're going to get shade in the evening. Now, what is the point of planting something behind that, like a tomato or a pepper, that grows all season long, and it's gonna be shaded out. It's gonna be competing against that sun. 
The next thing is if you're planting out something uh, that, that uh, is going to be uh, you know, similar maturity time, which grows faster. Well, the corn grows faster than the tomato. So it makes no sense at all to plant a uh, tomato plant behind or north of corn because the corn is gonna grow so much taller, so much faster, and the tomato plant is constantly gonna be trying to compete against the corn. What I like to do is I like to plant them in the back of the garden. I like to plant them in the north end of my garden, and that way the, the shadow is always cast. But even though tomato plants get tall, they're still not gonna be competing with the corn because they take similar times to mature, but the shadow is always gonna be in the, in the back. Whereas if I plant something like tomatoes here, Tomatoes would still not be that good of an idea because if I plant something like cabbage behind it, well, cabbage needs five to seven hours of sun. And the problem is that the tomato plant, though it grows slower than corn, it still has you know, a max height of seven to eight feet. And you're, end up, you're going to end up shading out your cabbages that are just lower to the ground, maybe one to two feet off the ground at most. And so it's very, very important that you know this. Now you can have a benefit, and I wanna share with you the benefit. I really wanna share with you the benefit of this because there can be a benefit to doing this as well. Like I said, pros and cons. This comes down to your, you know, your garden plan, but you need to know what can happen. You can plant something like, uh, like a, a fast turnaround crop that might go to seed really quickly. Things like cilantro, lettuce, spinach, um, arugula, things like that that mature very quickly and go to seed very quickly. You can plant them behind something, or I say behind, again, north. You can plant them to the north uh, of something that is taller, knowing full well that the shadow will cast on them, but as long as you get enough hours of growable sun, that they're gonna add that little extra protection to allow you a few extra weeks of growing season. Because the harsh sun during the day is actually what causes them to go to seed. So they might get sun in the morning, they might get shade in the afternoon, and they might get some sun in the evening. That's great, and that's wonderful. As long as that fits in your garden plan, that's something that you can do to your benefit. All right, and the very final thing to note with your garden planning and sun mapping is knowing how tall things like trellises are. Trellises, stakes, poles, if you're growing anything vertically, you need to know how tall those are, especially if you expect on the plant meeting or exceeding the height of those trellises. This uh, cattle panel here, this cattle panel, I mean, I'm six foot three, and this thing, I, I mean, I can easily walk under it. This thing must be at least probably seven, seven foot or so tall. And so I know that if I plant things like cucumbers on a seven foot tall trellis, by the end of the season, those cucumbers grow very quickly. They get a ton of leaves. They cast a lot of shade. And so you're talking seven feet of, of shade being cast. So what do I do? Well, I plant things on the south side of my trellis but I don't plant uh, things that are, are very long-term. I plant things that are very quick, uh, very quick turnaround crops, things like peas. Peas are wonderful because you grow them in the early season before you really plant out your, your cucumbers. And then as the peas are maturing, your cucumbers are already starting to shade. And so they're already maturing. You're getting the last few peas off your plant. The, the sun might be starting to bake the plants, but not enough to kill them. And um, you're getting those last little harvests out of your pea plants a benefit from the uh, from the cucumbers growing up but then there's the negative that yes there is going to be a, a really big shadow cast so just know that but you can definitely work that into your garden plan into your overall garden plan so that you have success for me what do I plant after you know well I guess behind or north of my cucumbers I plant things like herbs I have lots of uh, I have lots of rosemary I have sage, I have thyme, I have some, some bunching onions, things that don't really require all that much sun to do well because they're on the north side of this super tall trellis. It just works into my garden plan. Yes, they're getting enough sun to do well because I sun mapped it out, but I'm not planting things, I'm not surrounding it by tall plants and I'm certainly not putting like a tomato plant back there because a tomato plant would be, it, that'd be kind of a fool's errand because it, it would have shade for you know, at least four to five hours out of the day from the house, the trellis, and then the houses behind us. And so you're really gonna be selling yourself very short. So that's why I put my tomatoes in different parts of the garden that work with my garden plan, and I plant around them with things that are going to work with the overall kind of, uh, with the overall sun mapping of the garden layout.
So I hope that made sense and I really hope that you guys enjoyed. If you did enjoy, please throw a like up there. If you have any questions though, please post them down in the comments box below. I don't want anybody confused by this. And also, uh, like I said, I will do a follow-up once the time comes to plant out your garden. Just remember in summary that tall, fast-growing things should go on the north end of your garden so that the shadow is thrown backwards, not onto other plants. And also make sure that you know if you are going to plant taller things in the front, that you surround them with faster maturing plants that don't mind the temporary shade, and they're going to maybe benefit from that shade. And then finally, uh, don't plant things um, you know, that are they're faster maturing in front of things that are slower maturing but have a similar maturity date. Um, so the, uh, you know, if they're faster growing like corn, things like peppers and tomatoes, they both have 60 to 70 days to maturity. Don't plant them next to each other like that where they're gonna be shaded out because they're gonna be competing for that sun and the faster growing thing will always outcompete the slower growing thing. Just keep that in mind. So with that being said, I'm going to jump inside. I got some more videos to film inside in the grow room. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. As always, this is Luke from the My Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. And we'll catch you all on the next video. Bye.